Reading with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, machaba, moni mili wanji, namaste, jambo. Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so delighted and so very honored that you're joining us in our mission to help all families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to tell all of your family and friends about the show and please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app. On Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Good Pods, wherever you find your podcasts. Our guest today is Naomi Schaefer. She's here to celebrate a wonderful organization known as Clowns Without Borders. Before we invite Naomi into the studio, we want to invite you to connect with us on social media, facebook.com slash reading with your kids at reading with your kids on Instagram. At Jedly Magic on Twitter. You can also connect with us on LinkedIn. It's、uh, Jed Doherty on LinkedIn. And of course, you can visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. If you go there, if you're a parent, please be sure to click on the Parents Click Here button so you can check out our blog, download our free online magazine, and check out our certified great read wall of fame. If you're an author, please be sure to click the Authors Click Here button at the top of the page. To find out more about how you can be a guest here on the podcast, how you can submit your book to our certified great read panel, and also learn how you can take part in our monthly promotion program. And please be sure to listen to this entire episode of the show. There's a very, very important announcement coming from Naomi. Towards the end of the episode, you don't want to miss it. Oh my goodness, I am so excited. We have a very, very special guest here on the Reading with Your Kids podcast. Joining us from the great state of Montana, our guest is here today to, to celebrate the first book that she read with her stepdaughter. She's here to celebrate. An amazing organization, and she's here to tell us a little bit about what I'm going to be doing in the not too distant future. Please welcome to the show Naomi Schaefer. Hey, Naomi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm delighted. I'm, I'm really, really good. I'm so delighted to have you on.、Um, I'm so excited. I feel like a kid again. Here I am, almost 100 years old, and, and I feel like a kid again because thanks to you, I'm going to be.、Um, Starting a, a new adventure in the not too distant future, but we can, we can talk about that a, a little bit later. I, was om- I almost refer to you as Boss Clown、um, because I think that's a pretty appropriate title. You are the. I also think that's an appropriate title. Please, <laughs> you may refer to me as Boss Clown. You, know, you could also. That, that sounds great. I've, been, I've definitely been called worse. So. <laughs> Well, Naomi is here. She is a boss clown at something very special, Clowns Without Borders. Can you tell us a little bit about this organization? Absolutely. So, Clowns Without Borders is a nonprofit, and we are professional circus performers, especially clowns, who perform in refugee camps, conflict zones, and sites of natural disaster. So, we believe in The power of play, and that we all cultivate resilience through laughter. You've probably seen that with your own kid that when they're sick or they're hurt or they're frustrated, if you can find a way to invite a smile or some laughter, they can bounce back. And so we do that very same thing, but on a level where usually the frustration, the stress, the trauma is. Longer and often more prolonged. Yeah. I'm imagining there might be some people out there thinking to themselves a refugee camp, a, a, a disaster area. Don't the people there have way too much to do to, to, to sit down and watch a clown show? Well, you know, there, so there are two answers to that. One is in terms of actual activities, unfortunately, there, there don't tend to be a lot of. Activities, especially for kids and refugee and migrant kids, are among the most vulnerable population for not being in school. And then 
in terms of the question is like, wait, is laughter really the important thing? So laughter certainly does not replace shelter or medicine or food as a human right and as an essential need, but it is a right of the child. There's actually under the Declaration of the Rights of the Child, the right to play is there. And play is how children develop. Um, it's how they learn and grow. But it's also play for play's sake matters because joy matters for us all. So that's why we do what we do. I I couldn't agree with you more. Um, you know, I'm I'm currently listening to a great book um, uh, by the woman who started the the, the mindfulness movement back in in the 60s um and i'm just i'm trying to pull it up so i make sure i, I say her name right uh but it's uh, dr ellen langer her the name of the book is the mindful body and she doesn't talk about how clowns can help people heal but she does talk about the connection between the mind and the body and how our mind and, and where our mind is at has a huge uh, huge role in how we heal ourselves. And so certainly, you know, talking about going in and helping kids who are facing pretty grim lives, helping them smile and, and find some joy in life, I think is a, is a pretty good medicine. Absolutely. And, you know, if we think about trauma, trauma is in the most simplistic sense, being stuck in the past or being being stuck and play and especially laughter is about being present and so even just for a moment the act of laughing and a kid engaging in a clown show engaging in play engaging in laughter means for that moment they are present and what we hope is that one moment builds upon another builds upon another. And again, it doesn't cure or erase the traumatic experience they've had. It doesn't change the stressful environment they may be living in now or protect against future danger or trauma, but it does create a new possibility. It does create a rewiring of, oh, in this moment, I'm safe. If you mm -hmm. think about it, you laughing and playing is something you can only do if you feel safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I never, never heard trauma being described as being stuck. But the minute you said it, it's like, yeah, the folks are, are stuck in that moment of fear or pain. And that can be exhausting. Yes. And, and especially, I mean, for anyone, but, you know, if we think about kids who, who feel their emotions in such a big way, and sometimes in, as an adult, what might seem like an outsized way, that experience of trauma can really take over. And, and so it, it can manifest in a lot of different ways. It can manifest as feelings really being suppressed and sort of a shut down state, but it can also express as, um, as real combativeness, right? Of this, this fear, this feeling of always needing to be prepared for danger. And so even when the, the external danger has passed, kids are still feeling that sense of danger. Mm -hmm. And of course, what we feel is real. Mm -hmm. Feeling scared means you are scared. Feeling unsafe means you are unsafe. And so that's, that's why we use laughter as a way to just crack open the door at, at something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did Clowns Without Borders begin? I, cause it must've been like a genius moment at some point for somebody to say, Hey, let's, Let's go bring those kids a smile. Yeah. So Clowns Without Borders, you know, it is such a great idea. And you want to know who had the idea? Absolutely. A bunch of kids. <laughs> of course. Of course. 
um, where the best ideas come from. So this was during the, um, right after the Serbo-Croatian War, and there were children who were in refugee camps in Croatia who were pen pals with a, with a group of kids in Spain. And the children in the refugee camp wrote and said, you know, we're okay now, but what we miss is laughter. Now, the children in Spain were lucky enough to live in a town with an incredible, in a town with an incredible clown. I might have just said clown with a great town, whichever. <laughs> um, Tortel Poltrona. And these clown, these kids said, you know, Tortel, you should go to this refugee camp. And bless him, he did. This was in 1994 and, um, or 1993, that first tour. And they, they went and performed, performed a clown show. If you go to our website, you'll see we have beautiful pictures. Turtel balancing about 13 chairs between his arms and on his chin. Um, that jaw drop that you just did, Jed, that's what we go for. Um, and from there, the idea of Clowns Without Borders continued. And Moshe Cohen, a.k.a. Mr. Yuhu, uh, founded Clowns Without Borders USA and started work in Guatemala. And so that was the first tour of Clowns Without Borders USA. And so that's that's how it began this place of you know no child no child without a smile mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wow and laughter there is so much resource scarcity in the world there is so much conflict over that scarcity and laughter is is not and does not have to be a a scarce resource we can have laughter there's enough there's enough for everyone and and in fact the more the more laughter there is the more laughter that is created mm -hmm. and that's something that i see over and over again at shows and for me it doesn't really matter if the audience laughs because of something i did or they laugh in delight because that grandma over in the audience had a funny laugh mm -hmm. or it's so funny that a donkey wandered on stage and that's what everyone laughs about. And so more laughter is more laughter. Yeah. Yeah. It's talk about a sustainable, renewable resource. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I want to talk a little bit more about how you got involved. But before we do, you were telling me that there's a very special book. It was the very first book that you read with your stepdaughter. And what a beautiful story. Tell us a little bit about the book and that, that experience, please. Absolutely. So it's this book called Baby Clown, and it's by Cara LaRoe and illustrated by Matthew Cordell. Something that's very fun about it is my uh, my husband is also a clown, and uh, we actually met via Clowns Without Borders. I'm blushing, aren't I? Okay, podcast <laughs> listeners, you can't tell. I'm blushing. Um, so when... You know, there was a certain part where I I met his daughter, who's now my stepdaughter, and we we went to the library and saw this book on display called Baby Clown. And of course, that was the book we both reached for. And and we sat down and and read it. It was the first the first book she and I ever read together the day uh, we ended up getting her a library card that day. And what's very fun is it's about a clown family, the two, the two clown parents, Frida and Bafo, have a baby who cries all the time. <laughs> and they get all of their clown friends at the circus involved. And no matter what happens, the baby cries. And there are these beautiful illustrations of adults crying very hard and the baby doing what it does best which is crying there are pages where the only text is what <laughs> uh, that's uh lila's favorite part to read out loud 
And in the end, they do find a solution to get the baby to stop crying. But do you want me to spoil no, it? No, or? no, no, no. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll get people to, to check that out. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll find there, and it's a perfect solution, but it's just I ended up buying a copy of the book. And then I think since then I've bought 10 copies. I give it to everyone and... It's also one of the first books that Lila read out loud to herself because she knew the story so well. And it was so fun to read. (laughs) 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 You you know, as you were speaking, Naomi, and and people who've been listening to the podcast know, I just get these weird flashes in my mind and, and I just blurt them out. But We've talked a lot about representation and the importance of books being mirrors, windows, and sliding glass doors. And, and as an old white guy, you know, the idea of being represented in the pages of books, it's like, yeah, that, that, you know, when I was growing up, all the, everybody in books were, were white. But and it wasn't until you just spoke, talking about you and Lila, that I realized that, that one of the favorite books that both of my kids adored um, – was a book written by Tommy DePaula called The Clown of God. And I'm realizing as as I was listening to you that probably what happened was that Lila, Alejandra, and Chris somehow saw themselves part of these weird clown families represented in the pages of books. And... um, and talk about a, a a light bulb going off in my head. It's like, oh, you know, yes, I, under, I, 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 I get the concept. That's important, but it's like, I live that. It's like, yeah, my my kids. That was, they wanted to read that book over and over. And Tommy DePaul is a fantastic author, and I know Matthew Cordell is a fantastic illustrator. He's been on the podcast. Um, I'm, I'm sure that Baby Clown is an amazing book, but I. I think more than anything else, it gave our kids a chance to see themselves as normal and, you know, part of the world and something to be celebrated. Yeah, it's so fun. And we read a lot of circus books. We find books that have step families in them, books that have, um, my husband is from Venezuela, so books that have words in Spanish. I mean, when and Canto came out. I know it's a movie, not a that's, um, that's okay. <laughs> not a book, but you know that that moment. There's a line in one of the songs about Arepitos con queso, and and Lila was like, "That's just like we do it." And that was, you know, her first time of of having of having that happen. It's um, what's very sweet is so we've been reading Baby Clown again because I'm um, I'm pregnant. Um, talking about. Oh, I got another job. Congratulations. So, so we've been reading Baby Clown again. And Lila is, um, it's very funny to now, she's been talking about all of the things she's going to do to get the baby not to cry. And, and that's been, again, so it's sweet to have a book where, I mean, there's one page where truly, it says the baby was just a big mad mouth and it's just a page of a crying baby. And she's like, I know what to do about that. (laughs) Oh, good. Cause I don't. Well, that's really fantastic. And I, I, we celebrate families, families reading together. And the reason I started the podcast, I didn't know that, I mean, I knew that you read to your kids, they're going to be able to read quicker. I, and I knew that, but I didn't realize it was helping them build vocabulary. I had no idea that it helped them build empathy and help them imagine how they would deal with situations in the world that they found themselves in. And I had no idea that kids who are read, to, read with, you know, the ki- kids who you read with, boy, I, I le- forgot how to speak English. Um, those kids grow up and make more money. They're more successful in their, in their jobs. Um, I didn't know any of that, but I did know that the relationship I have with my kids who are now adults began when we were reading together. And that led to watching movies together and cooking together and drawing and playing sports and all that. And now going to Central America together. It was, you know, it's just a beautiful foundation to build a family on. And I'm so happy 
that you shared how you and Lila bonded with Baby Clown. I'm curious, how did you get involved with Clowns Without Borders? That is a great question. Um, with as with many of my favorite life moments, it happened in a library. Um, I was in a library looking for work and somebody near me was kind of talking to me and I didn't really want to. And on a whim, I typed clown into a job search engine and Clowns Without Borders came up. Clowns Without Borders was looking for a volunteer to work in financial administration. And, and I was like, Oh, I can do that. And, and I guess in some ways the rest is history in that um, at the time the organization was all volunteer run. Now we have a part-time staff and, and that was a big, a big transition to be part of. Wow. But I think the, the emotional reason, the, the better reason is I took clown classes as a child. I I had a, a speech impediment and I felt really self-conscious about that. And I I wanted to be big and bold, but didn't want people to ask me to repeat myself or to sort of say like, oh, where's your accent from? And And so I took a mime class as a kid, a place where it didn't matter. And that was a place where I got to be big and bold. Clowning was definitely not supposed to be my um, my profession in any ways. But in in 2015, I went to Beslan, Russia, and I taught and helped translate for. Um, one of my clown teachers at the uh, school in Beslan, which had been part of the Beslan school siege, which would have a terrorist attack mm-hmm. in 2004. And so this was part of the, the one year anniversary of that event. And being there at a place that in so many ways has been defined by that tragedy, but also in a, pl- a school of kids who want to be kids of teachers and educators and parents who survived something horrendous but also want to keep living and and kind of being there in that um in that conflict of those two things made me realize wow this is really what I want to be doing and so it did feel like great kismet when I then got back from Russia and saw that Clowns Without Borders was looking for a volunteer. That's, that's wonderful. That's, that's really beautiful. I, you know, I think there's so many people who kind of find themselves in their dream job or vocation um, without any prior knowledge. It wasn't like they oh, I always dreamt that I was going to do that. It's just sort of like the, in my own case, you know, the kind of heavens opened up and said, D- you should do that. And I listened and um, I was glad I did. Yeah. You know, in those moments, sometimes following your gut instincts and then you're like, well, okay, that wasn't my best <laughs> idea. But sometimes you end up <laughs> in the career you were meant to have. Mm-hmm. So, you know, sometimes you're like, well, okay. Maybe I should have packed an extra headlamp and a coat, but mm-hmm. other times you're like, "Yeah, this makes sense for yeah. me." Yeah. Well, I'm I'm really excited. Um, I, I, I people know that this has been a very eventful year for me. Um, what they don't know, a, a kind of funny thing, back in December, I became aware of Clowns Without Borders many years ago when my kids were kids. I had the opportunity to share um, a stage uh, with um, a. F- member of Clowns Without Borders, Hoopo, Chris Yearlake. And um, Chris and I became uh, great friends, and he was telling me about the work that he had done, I think, in Santo Domingo and in Haiti and with, mm-hmm. with Clowns Without Borders. And then this past fall, winter, I thought, this might be, at this point in my life, this might be something fun, a good way for me to kind of give back for all the joy that clowning has, has brought to me. 
and I applied, and I heard back from you on, I think it was February 6th, which was the day after I had an operation to repair both quad tendons, the quad tendons in both of my legs. And so I called my wife from the hospital, and I said, hey, babe, I'm now officially a clown without a border. And she said, no, you're a clown without legs. Um <laughs> But thankfully, the leg, the surgery went well. The legs are working again. They're not perfect, but um, I was delighted that you had invited me into the group. And I'm really excited that you sent me a, a note a couple of weeks ago, and you invited me to do something pretty special. I'd love for you to tell, because I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to be doing in a few weeks. <laughs> Excellent. Well, here we are. And I am so excited to share that Jed is traveling with Clowns Without Borders to El Salvador. We have two tours coming up, one in Guatemala and then the next in El Salvador, where we are performing for migrants and asylum seekers, and in El Salvador, especially for internally displaced people. And all of that... um, the language around people experiencing displacement can get very specific and very jargony very quickly in Mm -hmm. part because a lot of times those, those labels represent different, um, different legal status that then relates to what the people who with that status can receive in terms of aid and the, the overarching situation is the same, that we are performing for people who, due to violence or economic instability, uh, often both, uh, have left their homes. Some have crossed an international border, which is what makes them a refugee, Mm -hmm. and some are within the national borders of where they live, in which case they're called an internally displaced person. A migrant is someone who is seen to be traveling for a non-life-threatening reason. Mm -hmm. So, um, although often, you know, how you split hairs about that definition is... Thank goodness I'm not a lawyer. Arbitrary, tedious, all of those pieces. Mm -hmm. So, what's so exciting is that we will be working with UNHCR El Salvador, which is the UN Refugee Services Organization, and performing for all of those groups. Um, We're a team of two artists from the U.S., one artist from El Salvador, and one, um, our fearless tour leader is from Guatemala. And it's going to be a really exciting time of creating an original show and then performing it two to three times a day all throughout El Salvador. Well, I am I am so psyched. Um, I, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to giving back and, and performing and seeing those smiles. I'm looking forward to being part of an ensemble cast, which is something that um, I haven't had a lot of experience doing, but it's uh, when I have had a chance to do it, it's always been an awful lot of fun. Um, and uh, I'm I'm so thankful that you've invited me to be a part of this. Thanks so much. Well, I'm excited as well, and can't wait to to start sharing those stories. And for any of your listeners who are like, "Wait, I want to know now," you can follow Clowns Without Borders on Instagram or Facebook, but also via our newsletter, where we'll kind of send some joy directly to your inbox. And one of the Something that I'm so passionate about is that children all over the world, regardless of any kind of circumstance, in so many ways are the same in their curiosity, their cleverness, trickiness also, and their desire and right to express themselves and communicate with others. So that's, that's what we're all about. That's right. Hey, you know, I think that there are people out there that are listening and thinking this. There are probably people out there thinking, 
dude, what's Chad going to do? That's crazy. But I think there are more people out there thinking, this sounds like a really great project. And uh, I'm not a clown, but I want to help out. It, are, are there ways that people can help out? There are. And one of the ways to help out is uh, is via financial donation. You'll tell me. Am I allowed to say that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Please do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and you mute me. It's my job. I run a nonprofit. Um, so it costs us um, eleven dollars per child to get to get a kid to into the audience. So something that you can do is become one of our joy makers. That means each month you give eleven dollars and get another child who's who's living in displacement to a clown show. We also, right now for this tour, since we'll be doing a lot of driving in Guatemala and El Salvador, we have a campaign called Fill Our Tank. So it sort of invites you to drive the clown car with us to chip in a little bit for gas. And Jed, maybe you can link to that in the show notes. Absolutely. Another another huge thing is, again, joining our newsletter. That's where we'll share volunteer opportunities. So if you are someone who has a special skill, especially in graphic design or in video editing, we would love to get in touch. And and also maybe you know someone or maybe you are someone who has a podcast or who has an event that you think, whoa, it would be cool to have Clowns Without Borders here to talk about resilience through laughter or the right to play or whoa actually my workplace would be a fun place to have a work have a clowning workshop um we we lead workshops often for our ngo partners so we've led workshops for the minds advisory group the guatemala department of education Doctors Without Borders in in resilience, in burnout, we know that caregivers especially are susceptible to that secondary trauma response or reaching that point of feeling, oh, is, do I even make a difference? Mm -hmm. And so we have a workshop to help you know that, yes, you do make a difference. Yeah. Well, I, we're going to put all those links in in the show notes. Um, and and if you're out there, if any of you are out there and you took your kids to Taylor Swift, if it was in Massachusetts, you were twenty one hundred dollars per ticket. You could probably afford eleven bucks a month to get a kid to laugh. I, I think that's a wonder. If I hope you enjoyed Tay Tay, but it would be really wonderful if you also help some kids uh, around the world experience some laughter. I'd love it if you could fill up the tank because. I don't want to break down somewhere in um, El Salvador. I don't know if AAA is going to work and come out and help me out. So uh, we want to fill up that tank too. Naomi, is there anything that I forgot to ask you that we want folks to know about Clowns Without Borders? Mm. Oh, maybe you're wondering, wait, are clowns scary? Uh. And, you know... <laughs> Oh, Jed, do you love this question? Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I appreciate that as a clown, you did not ask me. But wait, are people scared of clowns? Uh, um, yeah. So, yeah, sometimes it is scary when somebody wears a rainbow wig and lots of makeup and uh, and aggressively colorful clothing <laughs> and uh, and is blowing up balloons or chasing you with squeaking toys. That's not what we do. Mm -hmm. So we are part of a contemporary circus movement. Wow, I sound so fancy when I say that. You really do. (laughs) Which means that my clown face is really the same as my regular face. Um, I sometimes wear a small red nose or a little bit of blush or white at the corners of my eyes to, to help them pop in a, you know, we're not performing on a stage. We're Mm -hmm. performing outside I wear sort of eccentric clothing, but often clothes and costumes that I would find in a secondhand store. So for us, the most important piece about clowning is that the child leads. Mm -hmm. So it's a conversation that the, that the child starts, that the audience starts. It is not my place to say, sit down and watch, Mm -hmm. laugh. This is funny. It's, 
my job to watch, listen, and respond. Mm -hmm. And and I think as as adults, as parents, wow, that's what we could all be doing um, Mm -hmm. more of. But yes, so it's that piece of we work really hard, especially understanding that children everywhere have have limited agency. And so as a child educator, as a child performer, it's really my job to create opportunities for a child to decide if they want to participate and how much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm very excited. I'm really happy. I'm delighted that you could be with us today. And I want to encourage everybody to check out Clowns Without Borders. I don't think we told them the website. Is there a website people can go to check out? Oh, Yes, it is clownswithoutborders.org. Awesome. So check it out today, clownswithoutborders.org. Our guest today has been the boss clown, Naomi Schaefer. (laughs) Naomi, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so much, and stay silly. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Juanita Banks Whittington. She'll be here to celebrate I Love My Daddy, her debut children's book. You don't want to miss it. I want to thank the, the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, we want to start by thanking our guest, Naomi Schaefer. Please be sure to check out Clowns Without Borders. We would love for you to support this organization. I think they're doing an amazing job. I'm so excited to now be a part of the organization, and I'm so looking forward to to being with them down in El Salvador. And, and and I hope that you'll be with us too. I also want to thank my team, Fatima Khan, Rory Grady, Soji Franklin, and O'Leary. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of The Reading With Your Kids podcast.